And so there is this sort of natural affinity that occurs through proximity to whiteness, you know, and this is ultimately part, partly to do with racial politics. So I think there's the extent to which the media has sort of looked at Israelis as being us. Um, and therefore, uh, there's this assumption of kind of white innocence and of them being sort of, you know, playing by the rules that the West sort of presents itself. You're saying as that's why they're not being by- held to account. I'm saying that that's why they are not being held to account to the standard that I would hope to. I think there is too much uh, what we might call uh, goodwill being provided to them, this assumption that, of course, they must be trying their best. Of course, they're just waging a war and, you know, things are difficult in war. And I think that if we were sat opposite a Uh, you know, a Congolese general uh, or a Sudanese general, or if we were sat opposite, you know, a Libyan general, the questions would look rather different. And that's the bit that I personally find deeply infuriating, that actually where we're at with a number of deaths, particularly very clearly and unequivocally today, over 25,000 women and children, that actually when you sat opposite an Israeli spokesperson, you damn well need to have done your homework because at this point, allowing them to rant on with lies after lies in the public arena, which are debunked within seconds of the interview being finished by people on the internet, suggests that we are not doing our jobs, Hmm. right? That we are not doing our jobs. If If you're being debunked by Julie on TikTok, Right. If that interview you just conducted is being pulled apart by Julie on TikTok and you're a paid up senior journalist in a newsroom, there's a problem.